Oh no. Well, uh, it looks like it's kind of freaking out on my end, but hopefully you guys can hear me. Welcome everybody. Uh, if you could, shout out something in chat, let me know if you can hear me. Uh, I am Ben, of course, Folly Young. We're going to be doing some texture painting, some poly painting, specifically here in ZBrush tonight on our female character that I have here. So I've been recently doing uh, a little bit of uh, a style study, you could call it, on Caesar Brandau's work. I believe I mentioned this during our last stream. Uh, this is actually a continuation of that character. So I've worked on this uh, after that stream. I think I worked on this character for maybe a couple more hours, two or three. Uh, so in total, there's probably about like five hours in this thing. And tonight, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing some poly painting. So this is the uh, model here without any paint on it at all. I've recently uh, released over on my YouTube channel a video um, going through the process of hand painting eyes. So essentially what we are going to do tonight is probably start with the skin, the face specifically, and then uh, from there we'll move on to the eyes and we'll try to go through that entire process. And at the end, if we have some additional time, we will probably do some changes here to our face. But before I do that, let me go on over to the Pixo channel and make sure we are good to go. And I think we are. But let me double check. Oh, I'm getting an ad. <laughs> All right. Uh, it looks like we are good. Cool. Yoda, what is up? How are you doing? All right. I think we are good to go. So as I was just saying, we're going to be doing a little bit of some poly painting tonight. A little bit of a quick demonstration on painting skin tones, hand painting all this. We're essentially going to do it all with a standard brush. Uh, and then we'll go through and paint some eyes as well. Uh, so this will be kind of the similar end result that we will be aiming for. But I have copied this. I'm just clicked on copy and paste tool over here to uh, create another one of these. And we're going to be doing this from scratch so I can show you guys the entire process. I have also imported a, uh, a little, not, not necessarily a, a reference image. This is more so going to be for sampling colors, a little bit like a color palette. Um, you can use actual people, pictures of actual, actual people, but uh, this was the first one that I saw that was a little bit more on the saturated side. So I grabbed this and I think this will be kind of a good starting point for us to sample colors. So let's not waste any more time and go ahead and get started here with our poly painting. So the first thing that we, we want to do is figure out what material we're going to be using for this. Uh, by default, if you just have, if you don't have any custom materials in here, I would highly encourage you to use either the, um, or a combination of the toy plastic and the skin shade four material. There are, I'm trying to find it. So there are a couple different skin shade materials in here, uh, by default with ZBrush. I would not use the matte cap. I would use the standard. It might just, I'm sorry, I, I believe I am actually just looking for the skin shade material. Maybe this is it. Let me make sure. Where did it go? I know it's in here and I'm just, there we go. Skin shade four, that is the correct one. So skin shade four is a really great material for just trying to get a nice, um, accurate color reproduction on your model. I would uh, definitely check out that. And then for eyes, we'll be talking about using the toy plastic material here in just a, a moment. Ed Winter, what's going on? Welcome. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? Uh, so I would recommend the Skin Shade 4 material. Again, that is the basic or our standard material. I always say basic, but standard materials here on the bottom. The reason why I recommend you use these over the matte cap materials is because the standard materials are actually affected by your uh, light. So if you go up into your light menu and grab the sphere and move your light around, you can actually adjust and change that 
on the fly or later on for a render if you want to do that. Uh, but I know I just said that I'm going to be using a special material called uh, the Zebro Skin 3 material. There are a couple different uh, Zebro materials that I really like to use. The Zebro Paint material, uh, and you can find these for free over on his blog. Just Google Zebro materials, and I, I'm sure they'll be the first one to pop up. Uh, I do really like the uh, Skin Shade 4 material, but I've found over time that the uh, Zebro paint material is just a little bit more vibrant, and it um, uh, it casts a little bit of a... It, it's not quite as flat as a uh, Skin Shade 4 material, so I really like it for that reason. But let's uh, go ahead and grab that Skin 3 material, Viewport Skin 3. Uh, the Skin 3 and Skin 4 of his materials, if you guys are looking for some good uh, skin shaders or just nice materials in general, I find the Skin 3 and 4 to be really good. But I've got that selected, and I think the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we're on the highest subdiv, MRGB, and we'll just go ahead and fill that in. And I'll go ahead and, since we got more people in here now, show the uh, kind of end point that we are going to be aiming for here. So this is something that I've already created off of stream, and we're going to be going through and painting this head up uh, up to a, a similar state. We're actually going to be using a, a little bit of a different color palette over here. I think uh, a little bit of a cooler color palette based on what I'm seeing. All right. So uh, if you guys have not ever imported an image like this, texture menu, just import image, select your image, and click on Add to Spotlight. It's this button right here. And after you have that, we can just activate the spotlight whenever we want and use the C key to sample. We got MRGB ready to go. And let's just go ahead and start painting here. So I like to just start by filling in kind of a base coat of uh, just a quick color that I select off of this. It is not going to be final. Uh, nothing about this in the early stages is going to be uh, super important, I would say. But let's go ahead and switch on over to RGB. Let's sample a little bit of this kind of darker uh, cheek color we got going on. And let's lower our RGB intensity down quite a bit here and get to painting here on our cheeks. So the reason that I have lowered my RGB intensity down uh, so low is because essentially this works um, kind of like a percentage infill is what I like to think of it as. Think of it as uh, like in Photoshop, if you change your opacity on your brush, it's a little bit similar to that. So for instance, uh, I'm not sure if it'll do it with my mouse because my mouse is going to fully apply that but let's see so if I turn that on 100 you can see how strong that is whereas if I put that on 5 I make sure I don't have anything on there you go so you kinda get the idea here and that's just with the mouse but we are using a pen so we'll have even more control over it here so I tend to even though I have this down really low I'm often stroking like very very gently with my pen it's very important that for hand painting, you kind of start to build this up in, uh, in layers. Next up, uh, let's get a little bit of this saturated color around the eyes. And I'm just going to gradually fill this in. Essentially, the entire objective here is to just color block out certain areas. So we're not trying to be super specific at this time. We're just kind of grabbing some colors and slapping some paint on there. So it's okay if stuff is, you know, bleeding over the lips and everything. We're not too worried about that during this stage. And it's important that you're not because a lot of this is definitely going to change later on. So I am just using my reference here, finding out where, you know, the skin is maybe a little bit more thin, like in the ears or any place where on the tip of the nose, typically it's going to be a little bit more reddish, tip of the ears. And actually the nose is a little bit more cool here, but let's sample that nose color and just start to fade that. And we'll just go around and sample a couple more colors and continue to kind of fill some of this in here ever so slowly. 
So it's looking a little bit like a clown, uh, some clown makeup, but that is totally okay. It's kind of the, uh, a little bit of the objective during this stage. It might seem a little counterproductive, but it'll make sense here shortly. And I just want to get a little bit more color in my face because it's feeling uh, just a little bit too white through these areas. So I'm kind of using this color on the cheek very gently to just fill in some of this. And I was planning on maybe putting some quick hair on this later for the stream. So it might not be super important. And I'm just trying to get this to feel a little bit less dense get a little bit more warm in here and I think we're getting there it's starting to get up to a good level Ilios what's going on nice work thank you man uh, soulless lady hello hello it's a nice username uh, firefang what's up what's going on we are doing some uh, hand painting for our character's face here so we're kind of starting from scratch using this as our uh, kind of like a color palette almost. So I'm sampling some colors from over here and we are going to slowly continue to build this up more and more. Um, we're mainly just gonna focus on the, uh, the face paint I think tonight and we'll maybe do a little bit extra here with the body. I do have the full body, but it's a little NSF, NSFW so we'll keep kind of that hidden for now and maybe Maybe do something else with that later. We'll see. Uh, but yes, let's let's see what we got going on here in the face. So we're at a point now where uh, I'll block in a couple more colors just very quick. I want to get this a little bit more dark through here on the cheeks. A little kind of uh, a little bit of contouring almost to use a, a makeuping a makeuping term. <laughs> Uh, makeup term. All right, and just a little bit more warm through some of these areas. There's some cool stuff going on here around the lips that we'll play with in a little bit. But we have a, a nice, nice uh, color palette that we can sample a bunch of different things from, which is very nice. But that's starting to feel a little bit more fleshy, uh, almost a little, a little bronzy. So what we are going to do right now is start to neutralize the color a little bit. And uh, what that means is essentially kind of bring everything that's really extreme back to around the same level a little bit. So if you guys remember, I said that the RGB intensity, uh, when you use this and slide that down, it's a little bit like a percentage infill. So what I like to do is uh, set this, you know, maybe 10, 20% or so, and just click on fill object a couple times and essentially it will fill in whatever color you have selected. I've just sampled this cheek color right here for the skin tone, and that's helping to kind of bring everything back where maybe I painted in a little bit too extreme, and it's starting to kind of bring all that back to uh, back to home. So I think I'll do that just, um, just once here. And there's some stuff in the ears that I would like to correct, but I think we'll just do that once, and then I'll come back through with an even lower RGB intensity and start working on some other areas here. Continue to paint this up. Especially where we missed some, some areas. So we're trying to fill in some of this around the ears where they're a little light. And let's see, I wanna go a little bit brighter, a little bit more saturated. And I'll probably neutralize some of this as well here, but that's fine. Night Shadow, good to catch you live. Well, thanks, man. Glad to have you here. Uh, just signed up for the course. Going to be a cool experience. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to have you, man. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, based on your username, but you might be the one that just sent in your concepts the other day. You had some cool cool choices there, so it's going to be an exciting time. Registration just closed on, what was it, on Sunday, I believe, so we have four, five days left until the first day of class. And for those uh, that 
were not able to sign up for the class. I will be doing more sessions in the future, but um, I don't have any uh, idea, at least right now, of exactly when that will be. But I will for sure be doing doing more, because I, I had more than a few people saying I'm not going to be able to do it right now, but I would love to do it in the future. So no worries for those people. All right. So we're going to continue filling in some of this color. That is not the exact color that I want there. Let's grab this uh, this little lip color. I actually have some poly groups here, so that's going to make selecting this area for the lip painting a lot easier. I highly encourage you guys to set up some poly groups to make some selections a lot easier, much like what I'm doing right here. And now we're kind of in between the blocking stage of color and uh, kind of getting the details. It's a little bit of a refinement stage from here. So I'm still not being like soup like before I was being very heavy handed with my paint. Now it's time to kind of bring that back home a little bit. Try to kind of paint within the lines, you could say. So we're trying to do that a little bit more now. Try to keep this a bit more on the clean side. And we'll start adding in some finer details a little bit later. Just kind of fill in this color around the lips just a moment longer. And get that feeling a little bit better. All right, so it's definitely uh, a little bit closer to what we want. Not finalized, but we'll come back to those. Let's get up here to the eyes, because the eyes are such an important part of your character. I'm actually very quickly going to fill in my eyes with a... Um, so yeah, I already have the paint on these, but we're going to redo that later. So let's just do a toy plastic, and I'm going to fill those in pure white. So... <clears throat> when hand painting stuff like this, eyes are, you know, of course, always very, very important for your character. They're one of the first things, your face is one of the first things that everybody's going to look at, and their eyes even more so, because they have so much uh, expression, character. So what we want is to kind of make these a little bit more on the graphic side of things and we're going to really darken this area. I'm going to try to get this saturated orangish color in here a little bit more and then we'll start to darken those up. Oh, my material screwed up. Don't want to do that. So let me try to get that in there a little bit. And Try to find something a little bit closer to what I want. I'm actually going to paint this a little bit brighter than uh, what I want initially because I'm going to be darkening this area and that will help to desaturate this. So it's kind of, I guess, a little bit helpful to think about this in terms of uh, how you're going to be layering your paint. I'm not actually using layers or anything. I, I very rarely do. Let's go ahead and get in here and start to darken this area. I do have a poly group set up for these eyelashes, although it's not a very good poly group because this geometry is very, very stretched through here, which is fine. We'll, we'll make do with what we got. But let's get in here and try to fill in some of this. A little bit more. Here. Let me try to select that. I'm going to try to make a little bit of a better selection here. Just so that I can fill in the paint on the actual eyelashes. So normally I wouldn't uh, do eyelashes like this where I just kind of pull them out of the geometry. But I was doing this as a little bit of a sketch for this character so it wasn't like something that I spent too long on and I didn't uh, keep it like super clean or anything like that so it's definitely very messy but uh, if you guys are being a little bit more careful than I was during this character applying some paint to your eyelashes should be much easier than what I'm doing right now 
I'm just doing a quick little selection. This doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to get in here real quick. And we'll fill that in. Okay. So very, very dark. We're going to have to paint some of this back. But that's okay. Uh, no, I'm not using pure reference. I'm using the um, spotlight tool in ZBrush, which you can find under your texture menu. After you import an image, you can just click on add to spotlight. And then you have that locally right here. I'm not using this as a reference. I am more so using this as a color palette. So I've just been sampling colors from this. Uh, this is just a tool directly inside of ZBrush. And essentially what you can do is press the Z key to pull up your little spotlight wheel here and then the C key to sample any of the colors here in this image. So that's what I've been doing here to, for instance, oh, sorry, I bumped my microphone there, sample this color around the eye, like so, and start to paint that in. Oh, and our RGB intensity will have to adjust. All right, so I'm going to, like I said, paint this dark color out quite a bit, because we got got a little bit away from us. That's fine. It's really not too hard. And we're pretty much back to where we want it to be. A little bit messy down here, but that's okay. Kind of get a little bit more smoky on the eyes at first. And then we'll maybe knock that back. So what I'm doing as I paint, essentially, is I'm just using the C key to sample colors as I go. And I'm essentially, you know, as I build up my paint more and more, just using my character as my canvas. So if I want a little bit more of that pinkish, I can maybe grab some color from the uh, lips down here and just press the C key on the cheek now and maybe lighten this around the eye a little bit and voila just like that we're starting to kind of layer our paint here more and more and I kind of like um, so what I've done here is I've kind of painted and uh, that's a little bit too wide but I've kind of started to paint some of that out and as I do that as I get that to a little bit of a closer color to what I'm looking for I'll then sample that color and you know continue to bring that into other parts here of the face. So it's all about just kind of layering this stuff up one step at a time. And we've lost a little bit of that kind of contouring around the, the cheek here. So if we can get some of that back in, that'd be pretty nice. But we're starting to get somewhere. I think this is starting to layer uh, pretty nicely now, so that's good. We got this super hard edge in here from where I filled in that poly paint. So let me oh, fix some of this. It looks pretty awful. And once we um, get those, get that eye paint in there, these will really start to sing. That's when, that's when things get really fun. Painting eyes. So the whole reason we're doing this, of course, I've been, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, doing some some uh, a little bit of um, kind of like a not a master copy but a little bit of a study on the style of Caesar Brandau and uh, through that I recently created a tutorial over on my YouTube channel uh, showing off how to hand paint some eyes so I thought it would be cool to do a little bit of a live demonstration tonight of not only painting eyes but because so many people in the video were asking about um, how I painted the skin of the character, I thought it would be cool to go through this process as well. And no worries if you guys have missed anything up to this point. I will be um, uploading this later. Pixelogic will be uploading their stream as well too. And let me make sure I didn't miss anything in chat. That's right, the blue boy, the blue boy concept. 
it's an awesome character for sure. There's a uh, there's a bunch of really um, cool concepts that you sent. The um, old man, I, I I don't know exactly what you would call him, uh, a priest maybe. That was a cool concept as well. Uh, let's see. Andy, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Thank you so much, man. That's very kind of you. Night Shadow asks, how many polygons? Seems like the stream is lagging a little. Uh, it looks like we had some skipped frames a few seconds ago. Hopefully, it's not too bad. But if it is, we can maybe check it out, see what's going on. It looks to be working pretty well on my end. But let me know. Let me know if it keeps acting up. And we can take a look, see what's going on. But in terms of number of polygons, I have no idea. Uh, maybe like 10 million or so for everything. Uh, which it, it is not that many. I've had a lot more on stream before without any issue. Uh, can you please show the flat shader to see how uh, the color looks just by itself? Absolutely. Let's do it. M. And where's our flat color shader? Let's fill this in. So there you go. You guys get an idea of the layers of color that we're building up on our face. So pretty simple so far. It's kind of what we started with, blocking out things. And now we're starting to continue into that refinement stage. So you guys can see what's going on there. Cool, cool. All right, let's grab our paintbrush again and keep trucking along. Uh, our ears are a little bit on the messy side. So I'm going to hand paint in some shadows through here. Where, uh, you have to be really careful if you're going to be hand painting highlights and shadows. It can get very messy very quickly. Gets away from you if you're not too careful. So what I recommend is Take it slow, and you can always neutralize the color if you need to. Back to where you had it. So let me see. I just want to get a little bit more color on these ears. That's feeling a bit better. Let me grab that lip color. And let's see. We'll do... I don't really like these ears too much right now. But we're not going to be sculpting on this. Well, actually, we might do some sculpting on this at the end. We'll see. We'll see how much time we have after painting. Let's continue on here. Get a little bit more of that red in there. And occasionally... I like to get some bony landmark it's a little bit too saturated some bony landmark yellow in there to help contrast the skin tone and it's really easy to overdo this kind of thing there are just a couple areas that I like to get some of this in and I think it can actually look really nice but like I said, it's very, very easy to overdo, so we gotta be careful here. Don't get too crazy with it. And I'm gonna keep coming back to this cheek color because that's kind of our our neutral skin tone there. I think we've gone a little bit too dark in the, uh, in the cheeks, but that's okay. Let's grab a warm color. Very, very low on the RGB. I'm just going to brighten some of this up. 
So not only can you neutralize your color with the fill object button, but we can also do this with just our brush by itself. But if you're gonna do this, use a, a, a very, very low RGB value, like even, even like one, one or two. Let's see, let's grab that along the neck. And I wanna make sure that our cheeks don't get too crazy. I do, let's, let's, uh, here, let's see. Let's see what too crazy looks like. Looks too crazy, that's what it looks like. Looks like too much. So again, we're kind of in that refinement stage. I really like to take my time in here. I think this is where most of the work is going to be done. Obviously during the block out phase, it's super important when you're just blocking your colors. But from there, of course, you know, there's a lot of work that has to be done to kind of bring this up to a, a level that feels, you know, uh, fairly natural. Uh, but let's, uh, from here, we're probably going to move on to our eyes for a little bit. And then come back to the skin. Some of this got a little messed up, but that's okay. I really like to um, darken my eyes quite a bit. But I think we're going to wait until we paint our eyes just to see how that looks. I'll also do a quick little uh, bit of paint on the eyebrows. I've kind of just sculpted these on with my clay tubes brush. So nothing too crazy up there. And I'll just fill this in very quickly. And we're just gonna keep these really simple. It's kind of a quick little block out of the shape. Eyebrows are almost as important as your eyes because they're extremely expressive. Eyes and mouth are the most expressive part of your character's face. So it's important that you spend a, a good amount of time on those. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our eye painting. Uh, if you hover over the tool, it can show the poly count. Yeah, uh, the total points is a pretty good average estimate of how many uh, polys you have in your your total uh, all subtools. But you can also hover over individual subtools as well to get poly count information. But I don't really care about poly count, <laughs> if I'm being totally honest. Is, it, is there a reason I have the head and neck separated from the shoulders? Yes. Uh, that is because I just imported a base body that I had sculpted previously. Uh, I sculpted this head up from a sphere during our last uh, stream on the channel. And then after that stream, I grabbed a body from another character that I'd sculpted previously from a sphere originally and just threw it on top of this, this character. Um, but we won't be doing too much with the body tonight. So that's why those are separated. I have not combined those, nor do I really need to combine those. So those are separated. All right, let's grab our eyeballs here. And... I uh, use the standard brush to paint instead of the paintbrush. It's pretty much the exact same thing. The paintbrush has the exact same effect as a standard brush with RGB turned on. It's like the same brush. 
but uh, I am specifically using my standard brush, which is a little bit different. And I've just grown accustomed to that brush. Uh, what processor and graphic card do you need to work in a render mode? Uh, for ZBrush, really you just need a bunch of RAM. Uh, the processor is used on uh, a few different operations, so Z Remesh, Dynamesh, uh, Sculptures Pro, maybe, uh, kind of anything that runs a calculation. And I'm not positive, but uh, it might also it it also determines how high of a poly count you can get in a singular subtool, which isn't really a huge deal. I can't remember if that's RAM or your processor. I can get super, super high though uh, for my subtools. Uh, I don't, we'll do a quick save. And on my first machine that I started using ZBrush, three to four million was about the max amount of polygons that I could do. <laughs> and I think we, uh, we just got some kind of hiccup there. But I currently have this singular subtool for the head at 50 million polygons. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. It sounds like yeah, I got a pop-up that said we had some skipped frames as soon as I pressed subdivide. But it did it really, really quick. Uh, I have 64 gigs of RAM in this machine. I have an i7 processor, uh, Skylake i7, I think. Uh, it's like the 5400K or whatever. I, I really can't remember. I think I have a GTX 980, I want to say. But the uh, GPU doesn't really matter for ZBrush at all. I think the only thing that uses it is, um, what's it called, Polygroup It? And I can't even remember if Polygroup It uses it or not. But anyway, let's get on to painting our eyes here. We've, we've talked long enough about doing it. Let's make sure that we do it. So the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you're using a sphere, <clears throat> excuse me, with poles on either end of it. It's going to make painting the eyes uh, a lot easier. Uh, and you can also use those to kind of position where you want your eyes to look. So let's see, we'll probably do maybe around like 15 or so. And normally what I like to do is just kind of start with a darker, more desaturated color, but I kind of like what we got going on with our eyes over here. So I think, let's see, what? That's pretty desaturated. Let's start with this and uh, we'll kind of build it up. So the first step we're gonna want to do Oh, my RGB got turned down real low, sorry about that, uh, is go ahead and start painting directly on that vert, and we want to get the scale for our eyes correct. I'm probably going to make them a little bit larger than what I'm seeing in that. Again, this is not a, a reference, it's more so just for a color selection. Uh, Maybe a little bit bigger. I think I'm fine with that, at least for now. Let's do, I think I did blue eyes in the video, so let's maybe do a little bit more of like a hazel, a brownish. These are kind of like, <laughs> they. Kind, I guess they're supposed to be like a very desaturated green is what it looks like, but I think that's more so just because it's next to this warm face. So we might stick a little bit uh, closer to that. Let's see here. Let me go ahead and start getting a very dark color in here. So we want to do this layer by layer. All right, so something like that. And then I very gently, being the gentle, being the keyword here, is I want to come through here with my pen and just start very slowly kind of spinning that around, gently kind of highlighting that and bringing out that color. What you don't want to do is come in here and just rah, do it all at once and get it blasted in there. The reason I do this kind of in a little quick spiral and gent 
like a little bit more gentle is because I don't want it to be perfectly even and this helps to slowly kind of gradate that out a little bit more. And that's looking pretty good. Uh, so the next stage, make sure we don't have any questions so far. No, we do not. Beautiful. Uh, the next stage is going to be starting to uh, darken our eyes up. And if I didn't mention uh, prior to doing this, I did mention at the beginning of, of the video, but the material that we are using on the eyes is the toy plastic material. Uh, but let's go ahead and swap on over to either a black or near black color. I am fine with using pure black for this, but I'll just go ahead and sample what they use there. The first step, obviously, get a quick little pupil in here get that real fast get the basic size and placement at this stage this is probably when I would start to uh, work on my anatomy of my eye a little bit more to make sure that I'm not missing any kind of specific hit or shape where I want uh, the eyelids to kind of line up with the pupil and iris so right now I might want to, you know, if I was trying to copy this character perfectly, I might want to try to uh, get the top eyelid down a little bit more closer to the pupil, as that's kind of what I'm seeing here based off of the, the quote reference. Uh, but now that we have our pupil, let's go ahead and start hand painting in some shadows. So this is, I think, probably the hardest part of this, and it's very, very easy to overdo. But uh, we're just going to turn our RGB intensity down and start to get the top portion of this eye and just kind of block that in nice and slow. That's actually feeling pretty good. So let's go ahead and start painting in around the top lid. And I like to do this in a couple passes, just kind of figure out where that lid is at first and then start to kind of carry through that line all the way to the corner. And for those that are not familiar, I'm using the solo mode key down here. And those are already starting to feel much better now that we're getting those hand-painted shadows in there. It's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and grab this highlight color next. It's kind of grayish color. And I am slowly going to start highlighting and brightening up the bottom of our eye. And I think this is when things really start coming together. So you start to brighten that up more and more. And let's go ahead and stop about there. I think I'm going to kind of fix some of this stuff around here a little bit. And just kind of paint some of that back. All right, let's go ahead and clean up some of the shadows that we have going on here. Kind of fade that out a little bit more as well as fix this mess, whatever this is. Let's paint that back out. All right, so that's starting to feel uh, much better. Once you start to get those shadows in there, it really starts to feel uh, quite a bit more 3D. So I think we've kind of pushed into a good territory here. And it's really easy if you feel like you overpaint anything we can always, here, we'll even sample that. Kind of bring that back. Switch on back to the black color. And get that back in there if we feel like we did a little bit too much. And maybe repaint in that top shadow. Something like that. That feels a little bit better to me. So definitely kind of starting to get that gradient in the iris is very important for the highlight of the eye. But it's also very easy to overdo, so kind of take your time with it. Eyes are super important, as we mentioned before. 
but those are starting to feel pretty good. I mean, honestly, I think we could go even a little bit lighter here, but I'll keep it where it is. And then for the uh, Scalera, the whites of your eye, instead of being pure white, I will start to get in a little bit of that kind of milky, milky red that we got going on there. Just a little bit here. So it doesn't feel so, uh, so pure white. I, I typically don't like to use pure white or pure black for a lot of things, but I find that for the shadows and the for hand painting pupils like this, it, it really does look pretty nice. And I'll just fill that in a little bit more. And let's see how that's feeling. If anything, it maybe feels a little bit overdone. So we could maybe desaturate it a little. And maybe darken darken that area. But I would say I'm pretty happy with these at this point. And we could, you know, sit here and fiddle with them a bit more. But I say we go back to painting our face and maybe touching up any part of the iris or anything like that. So I sometimes like to come through and kind of fix where I've messed up the shape here just a little bit and I'm just using a black but I'm you know pressing very gently I'm just kind of getting a little bit of that back in there all right cool 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 so that is starting to feel pretty good I think let's go back to our skin and maybe do uh, a couple more things here before we possibly play with just manipula uh, manipulating our geometry. Sculpting that up. All right, one second here. All right, cool. So uh, I think we're going to, I think we've used our color palette over here enough in terms of sampling. So uh, what I would like to do is again, show you guys that flat shader. I think that was pretty interesting. So let's swap our material back. We'll do this for the eyes as well so that you guys can see the paint on the face as well as the eyes. So that's pretty much it, nothing too crazy. So we've started to refine some of the paint around our face a bit more. And we're probably going to do some more darkening uh, around the eyes. But the, uh, the highlight really sells that as well. I have my light directly in the front. I find that that kind of keeps your eyes from feeling a bit dead while you're working on them. We'll keep our poly paint there. So I also mentioned at the beginning that there was another skin material that I liked using as well. It's the uh, Skin 4 material from Zebro. It's just a little bit more warm than I like. So if anything, if I'm going to do a render in ZBrush using these materials, which doesn't happen too often, honestly, what I'll do is I'll probably compo uh, composite both materials together in Photoshop and maybe, you know, alpha that warmer material on top at like 20 to 40%, not too much, just to get a little bit more warmth in the face. But I do like some of the cool tones that we're getting right now. I think it feels pretty good. But let's kind of continue painting with our skin here. And I think the next thing I said we were gonna do is start to darken the area around our eyes a bit more. So let's do that next. So as I mentioned, when we were painting our eyes, if, and you could kind of take this to be makeup, but if you are planning on hand painting shadows on your character's face, it is very, very easy to let those get out of hand very quickly. So like for instance, if I wanted to hand paint some shadows in the nostrils, it can start to feel really weird really fast. So I tend to, as much as I can at least, and uh, try not to do that. But uh, there are some places where it can look really good, like around the brow, around the eyes. 
trying to darken that area a bit can be very nice. I'm just going to paint the inside of my mouth black because I don't want to be able to see any of that. And what I've also done with my mouth, I haven't mentioned, but I just have a little cylinder of geometry in here that I've pushed around with my move brush to essentially represent teeth. I find that it's very helpful when sculpting your mouth specifically to get a little bit of some geometry in there to represent the shape of the jaw, if nothing else. And specifically, the teeth can be nice to also have just a little representation of that while um, while you're opening up your mouth and having that there. Let's go a little bit more warm here on the nose. Try to get a little bit more warmth around my eyes as well. And if anything, I might be able to warm up my entire face just a tad. It might be a little bit too much, but you guys remember me talking about neutralizing your color? This is a great way to kind of do that. I think this might uh, be a little bit too strong of a red though. Let's see. Instead of doing that, let me just kind of do it by hand instead and we'll just kind of pick and choose the areas with kind of a large brush here. So in these kind of more final stages where you're just kind of tweaking stuff, it's really easy to <laughs> screw up all the the hard work that you've done. I don't really like to use layers in ZBrush. I find them to just kind of kind of get in my way while I'm trying to work quickly. But I think that this is, if I did use layers, this is probably the stage at which I would start to use them and refine some stuff. Another cool thing, which I haven't really touched on too much, is that your smooth brush is also a really nice tool for painting. A lot of people don't know this, but the uh, the smooth brush actually can smooth uh, poly paint as well as geometry. So when you hold this key, you'll see that uh, up here by default, RGB and Z add will be turned on. If you just turn off Z add, you can see what that looks like and it's starting to blur that poly paint. Maybe that's a little bit tough to see, so I'll turn on the, uh, the flat color here so you guys can see it. You can kind of see how that's starting to blur that out. So this is nice when you're attempting to transition uh, colors and kind of blend them together. If you're having some trouble with that, I recommend trying out the move brush. Or I'm sorry, the uh, smooth brush, not the move brush. The move brush probably is not going to be your friend for painting. I would think not, at least. All right, so I'm just trying to neutralize some areas a little bit more where stuff is maybe feeling a little bit too color blocky. But overall, I think we're feeling pretty good. I would say from here, it's just going to be kind of minor tweaks or adjustments to attempt to get a slightly different feel from what we already have. So I thought it would be cool that um, as long as we don't have any questions, once we got to this stage, we could uh, either play around with doing some stuff with some hair very quickly and then probably doing some stuff 
to our face to kind of push a little bit more in the direction of this character just because the face is so different um, form-wise from what I was using. We're kind of just using this as a starting point for our color palette because I think it's a really interesting way to work. Really what I did was I just googled female face portrait and this was like one of the first images. I was like, oh, that, that looks like a good kind of um, kind of uh, color scheme. So we'll, we'll try that out and it worked pretty well. So once you start getting past that block out to refinement stage, I would say probably stop using something like that and um, more so reference what you already have on your character and just kind of use the C key to sample colors directly from your character. If you guys can see that changing over there. But I find that to work pretty well. All right, so let's, uh, let's maybe do some hair real quick. I think that'll be pretty fun. And I think we did a little bit of some stuff with hair last time. But I think we'll start here with just a quick little skin cap. And go from there. So let's see. This hair is pretty wispy, so we probably want to start by getting the basic shape of the hair on top and then create some separate pieces of geometry to represent the, uh, the um, strands of hair along the sideburns. So let's see. Let's just kind of pull a line down through here. If you guys are unfamiliar with this tool, this is the Mask Lasso. Uh, and by the way, a weird thing is happening right now. If you guys experience your masking getting uh, a little bit weird, like mine is right now, you can actually, and this is such a strange thing, but you can actually use your RGB intensity slider with mask brushes to affect the intensity of that mask, which is something that I didn't know for when I started using ZBrush for like the first year of using ZBrush. And um, for the longest time, I would have masks that would, you know, be masked off, but like not completely. And I'd be very confused as to why that was. So if you guys have that issue, uh, check your RGB intensity when holding down that control key. Again, I am using the mask lasso for this, which is, uh, while you're holding the control key, you can just swap your brush and grab the mask lasso. Uh, I also recommend turning off perspective while you do something like this. A little bit easier to select your stuff. All right, so we got a little skin cap here. Essentially, we just want to extrude this geometry. There are a few different ways we can go about this. There is obviously the extraction uh, little button over here. But um, I find that if we click on that, it's probably going to take a little bit to run. Well, we'll do it once. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time to calculate, but then it's also going to give us a preview of what that looks like, and we'll kind of have to finagle with this thickness number down here uh, more than a few times till we get something that we like. So what I'm going to do instead is just press Control w which polygroups that geometry. And then I will grab and delete everything else other than that. So I just have this little bald cap up top right now. And then we will be uh, taking this and extruding this geometry by hand, but first let's uh, see if we can match the shape of our hair a little bit more. And it doesn't need to be perfect. This is kind of just for demonstration purposes, but you can spend a little bit of time on it to make it look good. It's always worth the time to make something look a little bit better, right? And from here, you can go ahead and turn perspective back on because we're no longer worried about masking stuff. Let's do a couple of things here to remesh this geometry and get it low poly. I'm just going to use the Z remesher to do that. And 
we do not want to keep groups on for this. Wanted to make sure that I turned that off. So I did a little uh, group loops function to this geometry very quickly because of the way I cut it. If we zoom in here really close, this is a little trick that I've developed to make Z remesher work a little bit better. So you can see how this line of polygons is jagged currently. But in your uh, edge loop menu, there's this group loops function. And by clicking that with just the default settings, it'll go ahead and put in a couple edge loops around the outside of that geometry. It will also polish the geometry, which is fine for this because we're going to be remeshing this really low. We want to press Control w on that, or you can adjust the, um, uh, the settings in here to kind of get rid of that. But we'll just use the default for now. It's a little bit easier instead of going through and explaining every single thing in there. So now we can just Z remesh this at a really low value, maybe around 1K or so, and get a, uh, a little block out piece of geometry for our hair. So this is just going to be what we're, what we're going to sculpt on. And if you are maybe more of someone that likes to work with Dynamesh, uh, then instead of going through and Z remeshing something like this, you could um, instead just kind of mask off some area around the head and kind of start to sculpt up a base from that. I would recommend duplicating your head before doing that though, just to make sure that, you know, if for any reason you do want to roll back or you do want to keep just the head by itself, it's, it's very important that you have um, that by itself. With so, so like for instance, here is a great example. I've baked in the, uh, the sculpted form of my eyebrows. I don't normally like to do this kind of thing, but because as I mentioned before, it's kind of just a quick sketch, I thought it was um, appropriate for this. All right, so let's um, go ahead. We'll turn Z add back on for our move, our smooth brush. Don't know why I keep saying move. And what I'm going to do on this hair, this cap of hair that we have, is I'm going to use the Z modeler brush to run an extrusion. I'm gonna hold the space bar over a polygon extrude all polygons so extrude all polygons and just click and drag on that and extrude that up and out so instead of using the extraction menu what i've done is i've used the z modeler brush to extrude geometry and what this allows us to do is it allows us to kind of on the fly just kind of figure out exactly you know how big or how small we want to make that and obviously I think that's probably a little bit too big, but I think you could maybe see some applications where you could build out a helmet or, you know, some kind of hat or really, really any kind of headwear for, or armor or clothing or many things using this technique. Um, so there are a lot of applications for this, which is why I use this technique for just about everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude that out a little bit. I think I'm going to uh, also extrude my polygroup island so just this red polygroup in a little bit and that's just to make sure that I don't have anything floating there so we kind of have a, like a skin cap almost like a bald cap but from here we could start to kind of sculpt this up and continue to refine this shape but I think we have a good base. So let's see if I can do a couple things here to kind of clean that up. And I pretty much like to break hair or break hair, <laughs> break symmetry on my hair uh, immediately because I find that uh, keeping your hair symmetrical tends to be a recipe for disaster and the quicker you can kind of break symmetry on that the better off you're going to be. So let's go ahead and break symmetry as well as just find a nice kind of block out color here maybe something a bit lighter 
for our hair. Just to help this kind of frame the face. And I think we're going to kind of transition that a little bit more smoothly up through there. All right, so I kind of treat this the same as I would anything else. I think a good analogy would be kind of worked with our paint in layers, like one layer at a time, starting with that base coat and going from there. It's the same idea here for our hair. We start with our quote, like base base coat, essentially. We're just kind of getting the most basic shape of our hair. By blocking that out, making sure that stuff like this line feels good from the profile, but also kind of from the front. So we're starting to get that to feel a bit nicer. And something like that. Sure. Let's say that that is good for now. Uh, another benefit of using the uh, the process that we've looked at before is that we get some nice polygroups from this. So I can use my polygroup to kind of mask off certain areas that I don't want to affect. And now I can use my move brush to move and adjust just this top layer of geometry, which is very nice. It'll allow me to kind of thicken up the hair as we get more towards the back of the head. And we can even turn on transparency mode if we want to see the outline of our character's head to make sure we're not doing anything too crazy here. I'm just trying to match the uh, the silhouette a little bit nicer. Um, we could also use something like a clay brush to just sculpt directly on our hair and start building that up. But I find that at least in the earlier stages, just a move brush is pretty nice. So I've kind of pulled that up a little bit and maybe it needs to go up a bit more but I think for now we'll just say that that's fine just kind of leave that there and emphasis on keeping things simple now uh, so next I think her hair from what I can tell in this image is uh, fairly long in the back and I think her hair just based on the directionality is being pulled into a ponytail in the back so what I would like to do is even though we can't see it I'll just duplicate my hair and just use an IMM primitive brush to insert a sphere back here and this will kind of be the uh, initial piece for our uh, ponytail I'm just using the move brush. You maybe want to try playing around with the snake hook or or anything else But for now that'll do let's see I might Move that up to be a little bit higher just From my experience and if you want to look at some reference to figure out placement get that a little bit closer probably be a good idea but I think we'll just kind of leave this little tube of geometry here for now and if anything we'll just do a quick dynamesh because we stretched it out nice and nice and strong so those polygons get an extra warped just kind of get that basic shape first And just make sure that I have enough room in here for all this. So, just kind of fill in the volume here a little bit more. All right, 
we're going to do a quick remesh just to simplify that shape. And we'll adjust it here in just a moment. So we don't want that just hanging straight down because that feels super boring. So we want to get a little bit more gesture in there, whether that's an S curve, C curve, whatever you end up going with. I want to keep that a little bit more visually interesting. And I think I'll just run a quick inflate on all of this. Maybe not the bottom. We'll see. It's probably fine. Alright, so we got a few wispy strands on the side of the head. So let's try to get some of that in next. And for this, I'll be using the default curve tube snap brush. I'm just kind of wrapping this shape down and around the face. And I think I'll adjust my stroke as well. Let's see. So I think we want left to right, large to small. Yes, yes we do. Beautiful, all right. So we got a little bit of uh, some quick taper going on here with this tube. And I think I'm going to, well, I'll duplicate that over to the other side here in just a moment. Well, let's just kind of block out the placement here. So let's kind of push and pull this around with my move brush. It looks to me as if this is curling towards the face based on what I can see there. So something like that, nothing too complicated. And there are definitely uh, a few or more than a few strands, larger chunks going on over there. But we kind of want to simplify this because we're still kind of blocking in this shape. And if we let things get away from us and get too complicated in the beginning or we're going to kind of ruin the uh, final result. Essentially, the whole objective of, of blocking something out for those that are maybe new to sculpture or new to art in general, you always want to start with the most simple form first and to some people, I'm sure it sounds really obvious for people that have been doing art for a while, but for some that don't really understand why, it's because the most simple shapes that you're attempting to create are the foundation of which everything you're going to build up from there will be. So, for instance, the face of our character and the entire head, I'm going to switch my material here. Everything within the head can be kind of broken down into a Oops, make sure we don't dynamesh here. You know what? Here, we'll do this. Dynamesh. So I just dynameshed this head extremely low so that I can really kind of hit home how uh, how important these simple shapes are. So essentially what we're looking at here for the shape of our face is a giant sphere for our, our skull. But obviously it's stretched and elongated in some respects uh, from the profile here, kind of being a little bit more that way. It's kind of more based on the forehead. 
Uh, from the top, the head tends to be a little bit more boxy, but there's obviously some roundness to the cranium. And then, uh, I mean, in general, you can pretty much plop the head into a sphere and then kind of a wedge for the, uh, for the face. And then from there, it's just kind of refinement on those forms. So kind of worrying about the uh, most basic shape here is, is extremely important because if we don't have that right, nothing that we put on top of that is going to feel right later on. So that's why kind of taking the time to block out your shapes and make sure that everything is feeling really good in the most simple stage is, is really important. Fundamentals and the foundation of the, the stuff that you're creating is the most important and unfortunately, the most difficult part of the entire process. A lot that goes into those early stages. That's where all your groundwork is going to happen. All the, uh, all the hard stuff is going to happen during that stage. It gets easier later on. Like details, details are easy. It's the foundation that's tough. The blocking out of that. And I'm going to try something really quick. Because I think <laughs> my, my chat froze. I've heard, uh, I've heard that the chat has been freezing. If somebody could say something in chat, that would be fantastic. So I can give it a quick test. Because, um, oh yeah, yeah. It was stuck on like 30 people, but now it's on 100. There we go. So apparently the, the chat, yeah, yeah, okay, it's working now. For about the past, uh, and I apologize for this, like 20 minutes, my chat's been frozen. And I really wasn't paying attention. I was kind of just talking the whole time. But uh, if you guys have any questions that I did not answer during this, uh, during the last 20 minutes or so, then I promise I was not ignoring you. If you guys could um, repeat them, I'd be happy to, to go through and check out what's going on there. I need to... Um, very quickly, I'm going to just take a second to open up the uh, the chat in the browser because apparently it's a problem with the application and not the actual service. So, Jace, Ed Winter, Kyle, Doom, Pedro, hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for, for saying things. Give me just one second here, guys, and we'll get back. Open, open in browser. All right, we'll do this. We will do the browser version. Beautiful. All right, this one won't freeze on me, I know for certain. So, <laughs> uh, I think, so Kyle from Pixelogic was telling me that this was an issue the other day. And I was like, ah, oh, I've never, never experienced that issue. I just used the chat, it was working totally fine, but obviously now it's, it's freaking out on me. So it seems like Seems like we are good now, so we'll continue on here. Again, if you guys uh, asked any questions in the last like 20 minutes or so, and I missed anything, I apologize for that. I promise I wasn't ignoring you. Hello from Jamaica, says Jace. Well, welcome, man. Jamaica, Bermuda, Jamaica. Ooh, I wanna take ya. It's a good song. I don't know if you guys listened to that down in Jamaica, to the Beach Boys, but when I was younger, my uh, family used to go out on a lake on a boat quite often, and my dad would always have us jamming out to the Beach Boys. Now, now I love the Beach Boys. You always love the music that your parents listened to, I feel like, Gr whatever you grew up listening to. Beach Boys were one of those. Got some, got some good classics for sure. Uh, Kyle's rival, is this a hobby or do you do this for, the, for work? Uh, this is uh, what I do for work, man. That is correct. Started as a hobby in the beginning. I was like, I don't know what I can do with this for work. I have no idea, but I want to 
do whatever that is. And uh, a couple years later, uh, I was working full time, working on some uh, some stuff for toys and uh, uh, life-size figures for stuff like amusement parks, museums, events, um, that kind of thing. So I have a background in sculpting stuff, uh, mainly characters, for physical production, uh, but I've also worked on a lot of products as well. Honestly, I should have gone to school for uh, ID, but missed opportunity, I guess. Completely, uh, completely self-taught, which... I guess it's something to be proud of, but when you're someone that is very uh, protective of their time like I am, I'm like, ah, kind of a missed opportunity, but that's all right. I'm happy, happy with my decisions. Can't go back and change them, right? <laughs> uh, what would happen to the Smash characters? What would happen to the Smash characters? I need to see the, oh, um, the, <laughs> The blockouts. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Here, hold on. Just a moment. Oh, where did I put those? <laughs> I didn't even save them. I literally did not even save the uh, the Z tool. I have the folder here uh, from that stream, my blockout demonstration folder. And I did not even save the uh, the Z tools for those. <laughs> so uh, essentially, I did a. I, I probably can find the video so I can at least show you guys an image really fast. By the way, check out my YouTube channel. I do things on it. Welcome to the. So uh, a couple weeks ago, we did like some quick little blockouts of. Luigi and Zelda. Essentially, this was to uh, show my blockout process. These were based off of some some quick concepts by um, Oscar Vega, I believe, who you can follow on ArtStation, and you absolutely should. But um, yeah, these were just kind of some quick blockouts to show my process for that. They were pretty quick and fun. But uh, yeah, I didn't even <laughs> I didn't even save the Z tool. Uh, that's how how little I cared about these, I guess. I don't know, I thought they were fun. I don't know why I didn't save them, but uh, no, no harm. No harm, no foul. They were they were just something that I didn't as a sketch in a couple hours, so it's not like, not like I couldn't redo it very quickly. Um, a couple different questions about work here. Uh, what is your main job and how do you get to work with companies? Did you just reach out? Um, so my main job, quote main job, I am a full-time freelancer, uh, mainly doing a lot of stuff for characters for a variety of different things. Um, right now, I cannot say what I'm working on, but hopefully soon I'll be able to share some stuff with that within the next, within the next year or so, I think. How did, so, and how did you get to work with companies? Did you just reach out? Hmm. So specifically for me, uh, there was a local company. I'm trying to remember how I heard about them originally. Uh, actually, so this was, I was out of college for, it was like the year I was out of college and I was applying to a few different places around. Uh, there was There's this company called, um, oh, and I can't remember the name of it right now, but uh, they create uh, software for 3D printers, and it's like the best 3D printing software I've ever used, and I cannot think of it for the life of me, but they're local to Cincinnati. I'm sure I could find them with a quick Google. Uh, but I was uh, talking to the owner of that company, and they are like, hey, have you heard of this place called um, Life Formations? Or I think at the time, it was called LF Creative Group. Uh, and I was like, no, 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 and they were telling me about it, and essentially they put me in contact with uh, the that company. I started doing some freelance work for them, which got my foot in the door, and then from there, uh, they offered me a full-time job working on all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, there I got to work on stuff for the Looney Tunes, Scooby-Doo, Batman, Ghostbusters, 
Pokemon, uh, Barbie, uh, Hotel, uh, what's it called? Hotel Transylvania. Is that what it's called? The uh, Mavis Vampire Chick. Is that Hotel Transylvania? No. What's that called? Isn't that called Hotel Transylvania? I think so. Uh, Cloud of the Chains of Meeples. I mean, like a bunch of, a, a, a ton of different stuff. Uh, it was it was a great place to work, and I had a lot of fun working there. Uh, but over time, I started to get more and more freelance work, and eventually some other stuff kind of happened at the company to where it wasn't really uh, necessarily a great fit for me, so I kind of moved more and more into uh, doing freelance full-time. So that's where I've been for the past, God, uh, over two years now. Um, but yeah, now I get to work on all sorts of cool stuff still. But it's just kind of a, it's kind of like a snowball effect. It's just a matter of time. But of course you gotta be, gotta be good, right? You gotta be good at what you do as well. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into it. I think a lot of people are kind of in that stage where they're just trying to get to, uh, point where they can get paid for what they do. And I know, like when you're in those early stages, it's definitely uh, a lot of unknowns and you might be a little bit higher on the Dunning-Kruger curve than, than you might realize. And it just takes some time. It really just takes some time. Literally, I mean, if I can do it, hey, if I can do it, guys, you can do it too. I, I promise you. It just takes time. And it probably takes maybe a bit more time than you think. <laughs> That's why the uh, 10,000 hour rule exists, right? Not as a, a you know, rule or a number to say this is what you need for expertise, but more of just to kind of put in perspective like, hey, that's a lot of hours. Like if you worked if you did, what, eight hours a day for uh, not even three, so here, so 365, there are 52 days, or 52 uh, weeks in a year, right? So 365 days in a year minus 104 days for weekends, let's say. So that's 261 days a year times eight hours. So if you're working a full-time job, it would take you, you know, let's say five years of working a full-time job to reach the 10,000 hour mark. That's, you know, a pretty long time. And that's, you know, at eight hours a day. And if you are new to, you know, something like this and you're wanting to get a job in it and, you know, it's not, you're not kind of treating it like a full-time job and let's say you're doing like four hours a day, I mean, 10, 10 years to get 10,000 hours, right? That's, that's a long time. So I think that's why that, that rule exists is just, it's not a, it's not to, it's not meant to uh, be like a hard set number or anything. It's more of just a, hey, that's a lot. It takes, it takes a while, it takes a while. It's not meant to discourage you. I, I think it's meant to just put things in perspective a little bit. We can keep messing with our hair here. I think we're, we're pretty good on time. We'll just kind of hang out, answer some more cues, and keep sculpting some things on our hair. I'd like to change the direction of this if I could. It's not really cooperating. But luckily, we don't want to be, we don't have to be clean during this early stage. and. Nor do we really want to. We kind of want to keep things a little bit messy. Just kind of continue messing with stuff here. Uh, let's see. Maybe they're in the light box under my quick saves. Uh, they they shouldn't be. I just have a bunch of uh, characters from some sketches that I was working on, similar to this. <laughs> F in chat for all the, yes, everybody F to pay respects for all the lost files of ZBrush, right? Which doesn't really happen too often anymore. The, uh, the quick save feature is awesome, and it's even better now than what it used to be. 
Uh, yeah, I'd be happy to answer any questions about Hotel Transylvania. For sure, man. I, uh... I'm trying to think how many characters I did. I, like, did two... Or maybe even three versions of Mavis. Uh, for that, that was specifically for an amusement park in Dubai. And they needed, like... It was either just under or just over uh, 100 characters for a bunch of different theme park rides. Uh, but yeah, I mean, gosh, I cannot... I would have to, like, go back and, and look at stuff to remember, like, exactly how many characters I've worked on. We were always working on, you know, a bunch of different stuff when I was there, so it was like, one day you are working on a character from... Uh, this property and then the next day, you know, working from a bunch of different things. Unfortunately, I was never, uh, nobody that worked there was ever able to share uh, any of the digital sculpts online, and to this day, I'm not really allowed to share any of the digital sculpts, but I can share images that were directly taken at the theme park of the work, which is unfortunate because, in my opinion, the uh, physical... Like, you know, obviously I, I'm on the digital side of things, but the uh, the way they turned out on the physical side wasn't, um, let's say, ideal <laughs> compared to the uh, digital sculpts. I had a ton of fun working on that stuff, and yeah, for sure, man. I'd be happy to answer any questions, though. <laughs> Can you describe some of the hard times you've faced as a freelancer? Hmm. I don't know, man. Hard times. Specifically as a freelancer. It's a tough question. Sounds like an interview question to me. Trying to, trying to get me? I don't know, man. I, I'm a pretty positive person in general, so even when things are kind of kind of rough and bad and maybe you know not going so hot i tend to keep my chin up but i will say that it does get easier as i mentioned before these kinds of things are kind of like a snowball and what i mean by that is the more you do it the bigger your snowball will get kind of like starting at the top of a hill you push a snowball down and it collects snow and gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually, you'll get to the point where if you work for one client, they'll hopefully, if you do a good job and you're you know, a nice person, they'll hopefully recommend you to more people. And then those people, if you do a good job, will recommend you to more people. And it's kind of a, kind of a nice little system. And eventually, you'll get to the point where you won't have to look for work anymore. Work will look for you. And that's a, that's a nice place to be, for sure, for sure. <laughs> cutting a few corners it could could only take nine and a half years to reach that 10,000 hour that's right <laughs> uh, real 3d modelers make more money than stylized 3d modelers is that true is that true uh, I don't I don't think so I don't think that that is true I think it's probably dependent on uh, the, the job in the company. I, I doubt there's kind of a general rule there. What am I affecting here? Oh no. Oh, that is... We are quick saving before that crashes. That was weird. That was a nice little bug. You guys see that? I didn't even undo that. That was just... freaking out on its own. That was very, very weird. I think we're kind of getting a little Ray-ish from Star Wars feeling, I think. Especially from the profile. Uh, I wonder if we can kind of exaggerate that a bit more. Kind of like uh, pull this more towards the kind of bunnish shape ponytail thing that we're, we got going on over here. Maybe get this a little bit more high and tight. Uh, Maybe scale it up. Uh, 
anyway, how old are you? Alright, well, here, how, we'll, we'll do the thing where, where everybody guesses. Guesses how old I am. I'll give you a hint. I am older than 14. <laughs> that is your only hint. That's all you get. Uh, when you joined that team, was it under the art direction of DreamWorks? Uh, yes, but through a third party company. Uh, and I can't remember the name of that company off the top of my head, but essentially DreamWorks contracted somebody out and they contracted, uh, uh, us to do the work for them. Uh, what was your, your level, junior, senior? Uh, when I worked there, uh, there were not very many digital sculptors there. Uh, when I first started there, it was a team of, one, two, uh, I was the fourth full-time digital sculptor to work there. Uh, within the past couple years, or f two or three years, they were transitioning more so from, uh, uh, traditional into the the digital realm and then uh, from there it actually started kind of growing quite a bit so because I got on a little bit more early um, I kind of got to push people around later no not really uh, but yeah I I wouldn't I, I would say let's let's call it a junior position there was a somebody above me uh, as a sculptor uh, they didn't really do much sculpting, though. They were more of a paperwork anymore. Uh, they were the project lead for, for that specific project. And then... Uh, how long does it take you to develop Mavis, since she is one of the main characters? For the initial... I mean, it, it's, it's really dependent on the client and the team and a lot of different factors and really just kind of how how well it's done and also kind of getting lucky on a few things I mean, it can take a month I mean to go from nothing to the physical uh, life-size figure uh, that took like close to a year for all of those characters I said it was like around a hundred or so characters, uh, but it was people were like busting their chops to get these things out. It was it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work for sure. All right, do we want to continue doing things with this hair? What should we do here? I was thinking about kind of like, hmm, uh, maybe just getting a few more wispy pieces. Let's see. Let's let's play around with that. Oh, by the way, I'll mention, since it's been a while and chat was kind of broken there for a little bit. Uh, if you guys are new here, this is the Pixelogic ZBrush channel. Hello and welcome. My name's Ben. And I am the sculptor for this evening on the channel. A lot of it, uh, different people sculpt here. I am one of many. But I don't believe that there's anybody else streaming after me tonight specifically. But if you guys are interested in checking out more of my stuff, there's of course, hopefully it's, I, I don't have my stream view open over here. So there should be a link somewhere at the top of the screen to my YouTube channel. It's just YouTube slash Folygon, or if you Google Folygon, you will find all of my stuff. I'm trying to space these out a bit more. I don't really like to crisscross this kind of stuff too much. That starts to feel a little too similar. 
this is something that I would play with for a while until I found something that I liked a bit more. This is uh, actually a little frustrating to work with. So I'm gonna make it less frustrating. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, we'll continue to make some hair wispies. Let's see. Uh, fifteen. Yes, I am fifteen. You've got you've, yeah, you've got it in one. Great. Greetings from Germany. What? Well, hello, hello. How are things going in Germany? Uh, do you prefer uh, climbing? What do you prefer? Climbing up the position ladder, uh, meaning having more influence on the project, but working on it less. Uh, I uh, that is one of many reasons why I do what I do, uh, because I uh, love digital sculpting. I love working in ZBrush, so I like to. Uh, be hands-on with this kind of stuff, so I'm not uh, I'm not you know super interested in let's say doing paperwork. <laughs> um, I I didn't become a digital sculptor so that I could um, kind of sit and do what did you say Excel? Yeah, Excel all the Excel spreadsheets. Plus I freaking hate Excel. Excel is just the worst program ever made. But in terms of like art directing and stuff like that, that's very hands-on and I enjoy, you know, that kind of stuff. So that's a lot of fun. Kind of get the, uh, a little bit of both worlds with something like that. These, uh, this uh, block out, this skin cap or hair cap, whatever you want to call it, needs to thicken up in a few different places. For sure on the sides of the head to blend that in from the uh, hair strands on the side. Maybe on top as well. I'm just going to add some extra thickness here for a moment. The volume feels really awkward to me. Some extra volume in the hair is always kind of nice to have. My uh, pen nib is scratching the heck out of my Cintiq. I don't know what's going on there. It's got like a weird angle to it. Uh, I think your longest piece is around six months or so. Um, in terms of like digital sculpting, like what's the longest I've ever spent on something? Digital? Oh god. I have no idea. <laughs> um, I think typically time like that is a bad measurement of that kind of stuff. Because like six months, like what does that mean? Does that mean like you worked on it every single day for eight hours for six months? So that's crazy. Um, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, so probably not that much. But I've definitely, you know, put stuff on and off and worked on something for like a year for sure, you know, work, work on it for a week here and there and come back to it every once in a while. Just kind of depends. But I don't know about, you know, six months every single day or anything like that, for sure now. 
We got some weird uh, material stuff going on here. Let me fix this. It always looks like I'm sure for some people this looks super creepy uh, without like the eyes and everything else turned on. But really, I it, I am so uh, like out of touch with anything feeling or being creepy or weird. Like I just. I don't think of, <laughs> I just like never, it never even crosses my mind, so. I, for, I was showing my, my friend this, and they were like, wow, that looks super weird. And I was like, oh yeah, I guess it kind of does when you turn off everything except for the face. Got these hollow eye sockets and everything. Honestly, I think we could make the area around the eyes even darker. I don't know. We can play with it. Let's get back to our hairs. Uh, is that funny and cute logo your work? I'm not sure which one. Uh, nothing on this, the Pixelogic page is mine. I am, whoa, why can I not click my browser? This, this guy, yeah, he's mine. He's my little, my little Folygon dude. That is mine. I just made an illustrator real quick a while back. Nothing too crazy. Hmm. <laughs> I actually, uh, where is it? If you're talking about this guy, I think, I actually have a 3D version of him as well as, here, where is he? Oh, I actually have him on my desk. A tiny little cubed version of him, 3D printed out. So I was doing, uh, for a while there, a bunch of full color sandstone prints. I don't know how, it's, I'm sure it's very, very fuzzy on camera right now. It's starting to get darker, I should probably turn a couple more lights on. But yes, it's hollowed out as well. But I have a ton of uh, full color sandstone prints just like this back there on my desk. This is um, uh, SLS full color sandstone from Shapeways, but yeah. Yes, he is He is my own creation. I also have the little 3D print out there. Hello from Portugal. Welcome. Welcome, NEGZ. How are you doing? Uh, I'm thinking of starting using ZBrush, but I don't know uh, where to start. Do you have any tips? I use Cinema 4D, uh, and I think I could mix both programs. Uh, well, I, uh, I'm i here on the Pixelogic channel, so I think you should absolutely come and hang out on the streams more often and ask questions while you're learning. I think this is a great resource for people, as well as, of course, their YouTube channel. I have my YouTube channel as well, which is youtube.com slash Folly gone, crazy, I know. Uh, and you can check out all the uh, free videos over there, as well as my Gumroad, gumroad.com slash Follygon, which I'll just share a link here in chat because I have yet to do that tonight, uh, which is where I have all my higher quality paid content, which I have an absolute uh, beginner's quick start guide on there for ZBrush. I think that's a great place to start if you're brand new. Uh, as well as some other courses on here, as well as my new course that just launched, Registration's Closed, or I should be talking this way because the mic's over here. Registration's Closed, uh, and we'll be opening up again in the future. Uh, but I have some base meshes, brushes, materials, all the stuff that I use uh, in my work uh, on there as well. But yeah, for sure, definitely check out the uh, the free stuff first, and if you like it, maybe check out the, the Gumroad if you find some, uh, if you're wanting some stuff that's a little bit more... Uh, Organized, let's say. Tailored. 
but good luck to you, man. Welcome. Welcome to the ZBrush Club. I'm sure we're all happy to have another. Everybody, everybody, oh, whoops, I did not mean to click that. Let me delete that. Please don't crash. Okay. Everybody chant with me, just one of us. One of us, one of us, one of us. <laughs> we have brought in another into the ZBrush clan. Whoa, I didn't know that was dynamished back there. Um, so now, uh, after I, I've been talking a lot, so I haven't been really paying attention to what I'm doing here with the hair, but um, we, we probably want to start to get some more texture in the hair so it doesn't, so we start getting out of the block out phase and start to refine more and more, which is what I've started to do a little bit with the directional strokes that I've got on top of the head. Not sure why this is taking so long for this simple Z remesh. Shouldn't be. Uh, but we'll look at that here in just a moment. Yes, one of us. Everyone in chat, one of us. One of us. Drink the Z Kool Aid. That's what's in here, my Z Kool Aid. <laughs> Here we go. So I've started to get uh, just some quick directionality in here with my clay tubes brush, right? Uh, but we probably want to, you know, continue refining that more and more, and possibly try using something like Kin to a uh, Damien standard. But uh, to get this to not feel like it's cutting off so sharply there. I find it helpful to pull the edge of your hair in a little bit more. So I will be doing that. I'm just using the move brush right now with the uh, back face masking. So that's pulled in, and now I can maybe get like a better end point for something like that. That's a little bit better. But now we want to actually kind of go in the right way. So we got kind of a clear distinction where the shape starts to whoop, change directions and head off that way. And this starts to go back this way. And this starts to go off this way. Something like that. Those are kind of the main breakups there. So we can, you know, I wouldn't recommend if you're doing something like this where you're just trying to get some directionality for the texture. I wouldn't probably use the same brush size over and over, but just in the beginning here, we'll do this just a couple times to at least start getting something in there. So that's starting to feel a little bit more in the uh, direction that we want. Stuff is still, of course, very messy, which I think is pretty easy to see. It's just a quick glance. So let's get in here, <clears throat> excuse me, and start to just do a little bit more. And I'm not gonna texture the entire hair because we don't really have enough time to do that. So we'll just do a little bit here and kind of get an idea of some of this. You can see how I'm kind of fading my strokes out towards the end. Just keep that a little bit more 
clean and not all the same, but we're starting to get some more form up here, which is great. We probably need some more volume based on what I'm seeing. Other than that, though, that's a good direction, but this is kind of the process that I would start using to start adding the next stages of form here. We can continue to refine that. I like to use um, pinch brushes on this kind of stuff as well to like really separate out stuff. I'll show you. I really need to change my pen nib. This is bothering me. But really start kind of pinching and a little bit planing some of that out can be nice. But of course it really stretches your geometry so that's something you gotta worry about. Bad ziri mesher, yes. I'll scold it. So to kind of carry through some of these lines, that's where the pinch brush can like really come in handy. And of course, you know, we'd want to start getting some additional, you know, secondary kind of shapes in here. I wouldn't try, I would try to also kind of vary the size of your stroke with this kind of thing, as well as um, not have everything like what I'm doing right now be so straight. Try to get some more, you know, interweaving of some of these forms. Worrying about different sizes. I mean, there's hair is really tough, and it's something that I like to spend a, a good amount of time on, unlike what we have right now. I think we're already at the two hour mark, but we'll keep going for a little bit longer because I know there's nobody else streaming tonight. How long have you been using ZBrush? Every day, all day for the fa past uh, five years. Over five years. With a couple breaks in between. Just a couple. And then, uh, because this is a ponytail, we pretty much want uh, a large majority of the hair flowing up towards the direction of this point right here, or about right there. So, you know, all the hair, even the hair at the back of the head is being pulled up, oh, sorry, up to that point and pulled out and, you know, you know, obviously tied there and then it's falling down the back. So for back here, and obviously we'd want to use reference for this kind of thing, but for figuring out the directionality, we obviously want uh, a large, whoa, somebody's revving their truck. Um, we want this direction to kind of follow that as well. So kind of heading up towards towards that way. So we'd have to find a way to kind of blend some of this back here a little bit better. Maybe fade out some of that or just turn the angle of these shapes more so, whoops, more so this way. So they come around and like S back, which is a good way to handle some of that stuff. But Let's kind of maybe do a couple more kind of large scale changes here, answer some questions, and we will call it a night. Uh, I am on the most updated version, 2019, of course. Always. I actually have uh, this version as well as the last installed uh, because I'm still working on some stuff or something in the old version and I don't want to take that to the newer version. I shouldn't at least. I can't. But I will be uninstalling that older version after I finish that. I'm just trying to get a nicer kind of framing of the face. I feel like this did kind of go a eh? a ray from Star Wars direction, which is neat. We could maybe play with that more in the next stream, uh, but we'll probably end up doing something completely new. Hopefully, I'll remember to save this this time, other than just quick saving it. I'll go ahead and do that right now. I'll save this out. Uh, 
Let's see. How do you how do you spell Ray from Star Wars? Is that R E I? I don't know. Um, R E I? Is that it? Ray? R A Y? R E I? I don't know. Ray. Sure. R E Y. Ooh. Twenty three. Twenty three T H L. You knew. I put R E I. I did it wrong. That's okay. <laughs> um, please critique my work. Uh, I used to do live critiques over on my YouTube channel uh, every Friday. I would stream them as well and do them live. As I, I think I said live critiques. Uh, but I've been busy with a lot of stuff, so I really haven't had uh, time to do those anymore. Uh, but I am offering a course right now called Mastering Appeal, which is a seven week long program which uh, takes you through the entire character creation process. And at each uh, stage of those seven weeks, each week, you receive personal critique on your progress. So if that is something that you are interested in, maybe be on the lookout for that once I bring that course back. I will, um, I will be bringing it back soon. I don't have a specific date in mind for the, uh, for the next term yet, but um, I'll have more info on that soon, hopefully. Um, all right, so here is our original paint job, just to kind of compare and contrast. Essentially, our objective here tonight, and we can, I'll turn off the hair. I think that's the same. Yes, okay. So. Our, and we're a little bit more in the neutral, I think, with this. A little bit more towards some warmer uh, colors, for sure. Um, so we kind of started here. Let's see. Let's go back. So we just started with our black and white sculpt here. And our objective was to go through and paint in real time uh, this entire character, including the eyes and everything, which I think turned out pretty nice. I think they're looking pretty good. But, of course, we can always sit here and spend more time on them if we want. But uh, if you guys came in here a little bit late and are interested in doing some hand-painted stuff uh, and want to learn the process, I have a great tutorial over on my YouTube channel about how to hand-paint eyes. And I released this a few days ago, and so many people were asking about uh, how I went about painting the skin. I figured it would be cool to do that during tonight's live stream here on the Pixelogic channel. So that is what we did tonight. We did the skin as well as the eyes. And there's a little bit of a, a different paint job on the face. This one being uh, quite a bit more flush and have uh, has some, some cooler tones in there, some purples and pinks and everything. Uh, this one's a little bit more warm and I think more natural. Um, but yeah, if you guys are interested in this, this will be uploaded uh, here soon, probably within the next week or so. So be on the lookout for that. And I don't think we have any additional questions. So I think that's probably going to be a good place for us to end for tonight. Um, but yeah, again, uh, I don't think anybody is streaming after me. All right, yes. Uh, Jose normally streams, I think, after me on Tuesdays, but it looks like I am the only one streaming tonight. So I think the, when is the next, the next streamer? Tomorrow, tomorrow, Ashley Adams, of course, streaming at 3 p.m. PST. So come on back tomorrow and check out Ashley's stream. She's always doing some really cool uh, concepting stuff from, from scratch using of course, her favorite snake hook, I believe. I believe that's Ashley that loves the snake hook brush. Uh, but yeah, that I think is going to be a good stopping point. If you guys want to check out more of my stuff, just Google Folygon. You'll find my YouTube channel and my Gumroad and, and everything else. But you guys have a fantastic rest of your night.
or maybe even morning, depending on where you are in the world. And I will see you guys next Tuesday. I will be streaming here next Tuesday, same time, same place, uh, beginning at uh, 6 p.m. EST. Any, um, awesome, man. I appreciate it. I hope it's helpful for you. And as always, shoot me an email or ask me a question on social media. If you uh, have any along the way, I'd be happy to help you out, man. All right. I will see you guys next Tuesday or possibly over on my YouTube channel. Have a good night.